trespass and not obey thy commandments. He said in all things, bro, read that again, my Fasar. In, in, in a few things, not, not a few things. Uh, in all things. Not in a, a piece of things. In all things. In all things. Right. In every right. single thing that we've done. Everything that we've done down here. That's why this trans that's why this captivity we're in, like the brother went into earlier, is so great. And when I say great, I mean like huge. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's so heavy. Like the Great Depression. Like the great Depression. Exactly. That's why it's so great. You know, because we had went off as a people. Disobeyed every statue he wanted us to obey. Completely. And Jake worried about some other stuff. Oh no, I was talking about worried about the election. You know what I'm saying? It's coming like, come on, man. Y'all was just marching. Y'all was just marching two months ago. Black Lives Matter, no justice, no peace. If your life don't matter, what make you think your vote gonna matter, bro? If your life don't matter, how is your vote gonna matter, period? You got Jake on there, I voted, keep. I voted, we need to vote. This is a right that our fathers died for. Are you kidding me? A right our fathers died for, bro. Like they got shot, but they stuck that boat right. sticker on their chest before they died, bro. We died for a lot of things, but I don't think I, I don't think that was one of them. Man. I, yeah, I don't think that was one of them, bro. We died because we moved the most high to anger. That's why we died. And with that, we are gonna read that in root real quick. This is root chapter four and six. You were sold unto the nations. It's like you were sold unto the nations. Not for your destruction. We weren't sold over here to, to be completely destroyed. If that was the case, the Lord would have done it. All the stuff we went through as a people, all that tough labor, that tough bondage, getting beat, everything we went through, we still here. We ain't dead. Now our people are, are dry bones, but we ain't dead yet. We still here, it's a lot of us. A whole lot of us. So if the Lord wanted us dead, we would have been dead a long time ago. Okay, go ahead. But because he moved the most high to wrath. So he did it as a punishment, as a whooping, because we moved him to do this. We had, we had forced him to do this. We forced him. Matter of fact, go to Ezekiel chapter 16, start at verse 36. Go ahead. Ye were delivered unto the enemies, for you provoked them that made you by sacrificing unto devils. That's why we were sacrificing unto devils. What's that? That's adultery. We committed adultery. What's that's that forbidden fruit we was talking about? Eve eating the fruit, sacrificing the devils. That's what that was, those philosophies. That's why we were moved to captivity. Not to be destroyed because we moved him to anger because we was being niggas and spicks. We was being stupid, disobedient. We were eating stuff like this. Worshiping stuff like this, man. That's what we was doing. Idolatry, come on, man. That's fornication. That's fornication, that's what that is. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it says, uh, for you provoke him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not unto the most high. Yeah, in church on Sunday, screaming glory, glory, hallelujah, with a with a piece of bacon in your mouth and egg, egg residue on your on your the crust of your lips, just because it's right when the Sunday service started after y'all ate breakfast, you know, in that Christmas tree, opening the presents in the morning, saying happy birthday, Jesus. I used to do that when I was a kid. I used to, oh, happy birthday. I, I tried, I didn't know. Yeah, Every yeah. morning, you know, we used to, we happy did. birthday, Jesus, God bless you. Yeah, happy with Madden. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Happy we got mad in there. Yeah, that place, that tough PlayStation 2, when it came out, all the toys on the floor. Oh, happy birthday, Jesus. Oh, man. With a, in coloring eggs, yeah. coloring eggs and eating them, putting salt on them, with candy in a basket, in a generic to toy car that's going to break in two days. Oh, yeah, crusty water glue. Yeah, crusty, <laughs> them crusty water gloves with the glitter on them. It's yeah. like you keep, 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 keep. Well, it's breaking, it, they break it one day. They break it one day. <laughs> it's like it. But then me and him are brothers, and those are actually personal experiences we went through as kids, sacrificing unto these idols. So Slocky, if y'all understand, it might have been the day. Slocky, you know, but go ahead, bro. It's all right. <laughs> you have forgotten the everlasting power. That's ultimately what it was. We have forgotten the everlasting power. Like what Paul said again, I mentioned before, but he said there had to be a falling away first. And what was that falling away? Us forgetting who we were as a people and us forgetting who our power was. Okay, read that again. Uh, I'm start back at uh, the seven. Last? Okay. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto the devil uh -huh. and not the most high, ye have forgotten the everlasting power. We have forgotten the everlasting power. That's why we were walking around eating pork, eating shrimp, and the red lobster busting that crab's wrist open and eating everything out and dipping it in the butter. 
with the garlic salt and with the garlic powder in it. You know, eating chicharrones, like we was talking about before. Tripping. We was tripping, bro. The Lord said our righteousness is as a filthy rag, bro. Come on, man. You ever seen a, a dirty white rag, bro? That's us. We filthy, man. But through Yahweh's shot, we made clean. Through all that mess we went through, we made clean. But we got to go through what we going through right now because it's punishment. If your house I had to go through what he went through as a punishment, ain't we, we supposed to do the same thing? You know? When he suffered, we suffered. Except for all of our burdens was placed on him. And through him, we're redeemed, which is beautiful. Because without him, we wouldn't be out here right now. We'd be at work every day, mad in mad the hole, not knowing what you're mad at, not knowing at all what you're mad at, just irritated. But now you know what you're mad at, because you know you got a kingdom coming. But you know you gotta suffer more. Persecution has to come. We were that those <laughs> rebellious, disobedient women that Heavenly Father was talking about. That was us. These rebellious niggas talking mess about great mills. That's hey, same thing. Rebellious women. Our people are rebellious, and our people, excuse my language, they bitch made, man. A lot of the men in our nation act like women. Still, they act like women, and they rebelled and they cheated on the Heavenly Father, just like a woman would cheat on her man. The same exact way. The everlasting power that bought you up, and you have breathed Jerusalem that nursed you. You have breathed Jerusalem that nursed you. That's what we've done as a nation. The product, this is the product of disobeying the Heavenly Father. This is the product of it. We want to disobey, we want to have fun, YOLO. You only live once, you know what I'm saying? Balling, all them Jordans you call now when you playing basketball with those tough Jordans on, tripping. At the same time, you tripping. You think you the man. You think you the man with that Ralph Lauren, whatever you got on, but you still tripping. Losing. Ralph Lauren catching the bus. We whack, man. We whack as hell. That's all I wanted on that one. You can jump to um, yeah, Ezekiel chapter 16. <laughs> this is Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 36. Thus saith Yahweh without Yahweh our power, because thy filthiness was poured out. And our nakedness discovered. Our filthiness was poured out and our nakedness was discovered. How was that? We transgressed against them like we were talking about the whole time. Rebellious, okay? That's how that's happened. We were being niggas and spicks in Uncle Tama homes. Okay? Back, now we had the voting booths today. Back then we was trying to do some other stuff. Voting for which Caesar was to be in office. Which one? I think Tiberius is pretty good, but I don't know. It's something about, it, it, it's something about General Pompey that just touches me. I think, you know what I'm saying? Trip. Going off, bro. Us. Those Gentiles. Okay. And thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredom with, the, with thy lovers. Through that, through, hold on. Thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms. So it shows you that we was being disobedient. Can you go to Jeremiah 6 and 2? And I still want that one. Through our whoredoms. I still want that too. But yeah, you know how this fair works. Yeah, but through our whoredoms, we went off, man. Following. Egyptology, following Babylonian stuff, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, through our hoardings. Go ahead. And with all the idols of the abominations. Come on, man, having having Mary in our living rooms. You know what I'm saying? Having Jesus, Jesus hanging up on our wall next to Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Tripping, man. But yeah, baby Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesse, 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 yeah, hold it, hold it a lamb with a little with a little Jake standing beside him like this and the rest of the mice is chill to sit down and he's standing on the tree like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> and by the blood, and by the blood of thy children, which thou have given unto them. Yeah, because that's what we have done. And technically, if you really believe it or not, it's still going on right now. When you go into the, this, this whole plan of parenthood ordeal, abortion clinics, a lot of these, a lot of these baby fetuses are actually sold to big buyers like McDonald's, Pepsi, and you're actually eating that stuff, man. And when you research that, it's going to us sacrificing the mole, because a lot of times when our when our, our women or our people sacrificed to those gods back then, they were doing it for gain because they want to receive something. 
to receive something from that guy. When you're doing it right now, when you have that abortion, you are going to receive that gain because you ain't going to have to take care of the responsibilities to take care of a child. So you're going to have that gain, that extra money, those finances. Want to keep her? Want to keep her body right? You know, don't want her titties to sag. You know, don't want to digress. But that's just when we sacrificed. When we sacrificed our children. That's what it was going into. So in all manner, in, in all manner of wickedness, our people have committed on every single level you can think of. So when you consider the fact that you in this captivity, that's why we was tripping. Go ahead. <clears throat> Verse thirty-seven. Behold, therefore I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, mm -hmm. and all of them thou hast loved, with all of them thou hast, hast hated, I will even gather them round about against thee, mm -hmm. and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may, <clears throat> that they may see all thy nakedness. Uh-huh, go ahead. And I will judge thee. This is the key point why I want to bring this out. Uh, verse 38. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. Now according to the law, Woman, when a woman breaks wedlock, that's a woman committing adultery. And according to the law, I'm gonna ask one of you brothers. Um, I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask you. When when a woman commits adultery to her husband, what's the judgment for it? There you go. It's death, right? So go ahead and read that yeah. one more time. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. I will judge thee as women that breaketh wedlock. So for us. Going into all these idols, all these philosophies, eating this pork, tripping, being rebellious, our whoredoms, being hoes, death. And that's what you see in these streets daily. You go to Compton, you see death. South Dallas, death. You see people eating McDonald's, getting cancer, death. Death, man. Our people are in a dead state. Dry bones everywhere, physically and mentally. Our people are gone, bro. When it says in the land that spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, those dead bodies, those be wandering? Come on now, man. The Lord cut us off, bro. He cut us off at a point in time. That's death. No way of destruction. When you go out of the way of understanding, when this, according to this work, it said you shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Our people went away from this understanding. Dry bones, done, fruit. Like the brother was talking about earlier. You in the hospital, not, not knowing what's wrong with you, but you have your wife? Yeah, we're going to keep that out. Yeah, yeah. That's like that. It's all good. Yeah, when you're in that hospital, your woman go to that vending machine and hit F2. Bring you back and you eat it like you mentioned earlier. You eat those pork runs. Man, I don't know what's going on right there. Eating it. You know what I'm saying? You trying to teach these people the truth and they walk up to you like, oh, that's real deep, man. Y'all want some hot dogs? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's like it. Hey, it, when we was, in the, we was on the other side, we was trying to teach his brother-in-law and his sister, and they're all, oh, man, this is dope, man. This is, oh, this is interesting, wow. And right after we got done, he cracked open a pack of ballpark franks and threw them in the hot boiling water. It was like, y'all some hot dogs? Right after we got done telling them that, and, 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 while in the bag of pork rinds. It's a lot you know? It's a lot here. We came in the truth together, so. But that's why those are examples, you know? Those are examples of why our people are dead. Dead state. Our people would rather go to death than life. But what's that life? That's these scriptures. That's these scriptures. And when you in this truth, you willing to lose that life in this world to gain this life right here. It says, "Well, he is willing to lose his life shall gain it." And that's what this is. You gon' you gon' get you gonna gain the kingdom. You gonna gain the kingdom. Ultimately, when you put away the ordinance of this world, you put away stuff that causes this death. These idols. You know, don't want to be a whore no more. The Lord still had mercy on us. When you go, when you go to that judgment, it's death, bro. We still here. Now that's if that ain't mercy, I don't know what to say. Back then, we we supposed to be dead, bro. We supposed to be gone. That's mercy. So if you falling out right now because you got some stuff in the world to do, same for you. And we gotta pray and hope that we don't end up being in that category because it's easy for the Lord to do it just like that, just like that. Can you bring that up in Jeremiah real quick? Jeremiah six and two. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. This is what shows us when you read Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, the 36th verse, a woman that breaketh wedlock. This is what shows you that it's talking about us. Because when you read Jeremiah 6, read it again one more time. Uh, this is Jeremiah 6 and 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. All right, so that's how the Lord liked us. That's how we were to the Heavenly Father. 
That's why when Yahweh Shai comes, it talks about the marriage so much. The marriage this, the marriage that. The five foolish verses, the five wise verses to, to, to be married back in. That's what it's going into because we are the woman of the Heavenly Father. That's why he got so mad when we cheated on him. When we cheated, that's why he was like, you know what, y'all gonna die. And it took your house side to come back. It took your house side to actually be like, you know what? You know what? No, it took the Heavenly Father to be like, you know what, you gonna save him. But through you, you gonna do it. We got hey, your blood, bro. That's what we need, you know? The shepherds with their flock. Yes, so, yes, okay. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. Mm, that's a good one. For thy maker is thy husband. Who is he talking to in here? He's not talking to everybody. He's not talking to whoever picks this book up and read it. And the reason why you know that, because when you read Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2, it talks about the daughter of Zion, and that's Israel. Okay? Go ahead, select like it. Uh, the Lord of hosts is his name, mm -hmm. and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And thy Redeemer, the Holy, the, the Lord of hosts is his name, Yahweh. Yahweh is his name, and the Redeemer of Israel. Who's the Redeemer of Israel? That's Yahweh's shot. His right hand. The one who we exalted to be a prince and a savior unto Israel. Right. To give repentance unto sins. Now, when you go to that, we, I know you got more on that one. When you go to that, when it acts the fifth chapter, where it says to give repentance unto to sins, that even shows you that he stopped dealing with that as, as a nation. And he had to send Yahweh Shai. Just his blood brought us back into good terms with the Heavenly Father. Okay? Go ahead. Uh, the power of the whole earth shall he be called. The power of the whole earth. The whole earth. This whole earth is, is under his, is his footstool. The power of all of it. Go ahead. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. And that's how we are when you look at the condition of our people. Especially the elect right now. The elect. When you look at the elect, we're grieved in the spirit. Yahweh Shai was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Same thing with us. When you read Psalms 44, it talks about us being the sheep counted forth to the slaughter. Now that's grief in the spirit. You know, matter of fact, hold that and um, go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, start at the top. But um, I want you to finish locking. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead, because I'm going to go there. I didn't mean like hold it on that one. I meant oh. to say hold it on that one. Oh, God. And the wife of you, when thou was refused, said thy power. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. With great mercies will I gather thee. It says this is a small moment. This is a small moment. It seemed like a long time for us, but the Lord says one day is of a thousand years, and he talks about giving us eternal life. So this is nothing but just like a blink, like what King David said when you read um, Psalms, uh, Psalms 137. I believe it's Psalms 137 where he says it's pretty much like a dream or like a blink. You know, it's like we don't no, no, I want 26. Yeah. Okay, the water, brother. The water. It's like, you know, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, verse 8. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, said the Lord thy Redeemer. With everlasting kindness, he's still going to have mercy, but right now, the time we in, it ain't the time to joy and kick around and be happy. Now, when you're, you will have certain instances, like it, when he's smiling and joking, especially when you're amongst the brotherhood. But the scriptures say it's better to be in the house of mourning. Like we read in that verse in there where it talks about how we were grieved. How we're grieved, we're grieved right now. But that's the hardness to make us better. That's that refinement process. Like it says in Sirach, the 27 chapter. Matter of fact, can you go to Sirach 27 and five? One of y'all? Yeah, you got that one in um, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, girl. Start at the top. Did you have more on that one? No, no, no. Okay, yeah, we're going Con, con. Ecclesiastes seven and one. A good name is better than uh, a good name is better than precious ointment. Go ahead. And the day of, of death than the day of one's birth. Okay. It is better to go to, to the house of mourning to than to go to the house of feasting. So it says it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. Now, the reason why I brought the scripture out because the brother read in Isaiah the fifty-fourth chapter, right? We're talking about how we were grieved. And your house side was grieved. And we're grieved daily, man. Hey, son of what's going on, brother? None, man, just, you know, catching his hell. But Lord willing, we endure to the end. You know how the spiritual conversation is when you talk to a spiritual brother. It's a lot more grieving than a lot more good things to say. Now, are we going to stay good things, stay positive? Absolutely. Hey, we almost out of here, brother. Stay in the faith. Absolutely. But all that goes in hand in hand with grieving. The reason why you're saying stuff like that is because you're in a condition where you're catching hell. We grieving. But the Lord says it's better for that. It's better to always be in a serious mind. 
to be grieved, to be broken. The Lord said it, his sacrifice over our contrite spirit. And that's the grieved, sorrowful mind, okay? When you always catching hell, that shows you the Lord's dealing with you. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. In the house of mourning, uh, in the house of feasting, mm -hmm. for, for that is the end of all men, and the living will, and the living will lay it, the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. So if you laughing all the time, it even talks about that in the scriptures, about excessive laughter. I don't remember the verse right off the head, but it talks about a man with excessive laughter and pretty much, don't, hey, don't rely on him or watch him. Can't take him seriously. Can't take him serious if he's laughing all the time. And a lot of those guys is always laughing at your jobs or at school. Whatever it is, a lot of times they be the main ones catching hell. Okay. Got stuff on their mind. They trying to cover up all the hell that they catch. When you goofing around all the dang time, our people full of goofballs out here. But that shows you that hell, the hell is condition we in. But it says, um, go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorrow is better than laughter. It's better to be in that serious, that serious mind than be laughing and joking all the dang time. Yeah. All right? Like the brother said, you can't take them people serious. But when you got that serious look on your face, you can look, you can, you can get taken serious. And a lot of people ain't gonna wanna mess with you. Like when you read Isaiah the 53rd chapter where it talks about the looks of Yahweh Shah saying um pretty much how um, you know pretty he wasn't delightful to look upon. Rough hey, paraphrase. I can say this, this yeah. I listen to this guy Neely Fuller and he he be going into how like our people don't have anything to celebrate right now, man. Like we have nothing to celebrate. So basically the balance of the most high, understanding the times that we in right now, man, we in evil or serious times. So uh, for the most part, you should be in a, in a serious mind frame, man. Of course, you know, uh, we made in the flesh, and it's balanced, so sometimes you might joke here and there. Okay. At the end of the day, you need to be in a serious spirit, man. We ain't gonna really rejoice and get to be happy until we're in the kingdom, man. We're righteous in this world, we're right, brother. You know? God, brother. You we gotta see homosexuals, man, and we can't act out the man. most highest judgment right on spot, man. Get you wanna laugh right. all the time. That ain't shit funny about that, man. You know what I'm saying? Kind of that's brother. why the scriptures speak about in that uh, same book, Ecclesiastes, I think it's the, uh, probably the same chapter. Folly is set in great dignity, no, it's, man. It's, it's, uh, few that's chapters, the 10th chapter, chapter. Salaki, yeah. Kind of. But it says that folly is set in great dignity, man. So right here, we're in an empire where being foolish, laughing all the damn time, not taking anything seriously, man, that gets uphill. Kind of. But that's, a, that, that's why the scriptures talk about the turning of things upside down, man. And that's why we so ready to get out of here. That's so right, we brother. We ain't got nothing to really be uh, happy about, man. That's right, brother. Come on, and I'm going to end it off on this right here. Sit on that with the water. Yeah. End it off on this verse right here. You'll see the, the camera, the light flashing on the camera. Oh, okay. Cool. Well, let's roll. Mm -hmm. 27 and 5. The furnace grew with the potter's vessels. The furnace proved with the potter's vessels, okay? <laughs> like when you make a pot. You gotta use the clay, shape it in any type of form that you want to, but in order for that pot to be durable, to be formed completely, the completeness of that pot, you gotta put that fire to it. You gotta heat it up so it'll be hardened to the point where it'll get dropped and nothing will be able to break it. It'll get that tough skin when that fire hits it, okay? Go ahead. So the trial of man is in his reason. So the trial of man is in his reason. So with that pot, the Lord considers being pots in plenty of scriptures, but in order for that pot to be solidified, you gotta place that fire to it. Heat has to get put to it. Heat has to, like it says in um, 1 Peter 4 and 12. Come on, brother. You know, I'm just it talks about, about think not, thinking not strange concerning the fiery fire trial that we put through. Come. All this hell that we going through, all this hell that we catching. We're finding, man. That's why we made so serious. When you made serious and you look serious, people don't want to mess with you, but that's a refinement process. So you will be pure. You will be purified. So like, you purified. And when you placed on that judgment seat, hope and pray that it's on, on for the right side. You know, in righteousness for that kingdom. You know? A lot of Jake laughing all the dang time. They can't take that heat. They end up leaving. Kind, brother. That goes into the parable with the sower and the seed. That seed that got cast on that sunny ground. It talked about as soon as it grew, it wasn't rooted. As soon as that sun came out, it withered it away. Withered, yeah. Kind. It couldn't take that heat. Couldn't take the heat to the point where it didn't have those room, those, those roots, to help it grow, and it fell, withered right away. A lot of that's happening right now in Israel. We have to pray daily. It don't happen to us. That's right, brother. It's a trying time we're living in right now. World War III is right around the corner. Right around the corner. Literally. I'm talking about tonight. It might have been already, I don't know, the verdict might have already got passed. Hillary or Donald Trump might be president right now. 
Donald Trump's president, Vladimir Putin, I'm sorry, if Hillary Clinton is president, Vladimir Putin already said, we got nukes waiting, ready for y'all asses. Let's keep on <laughs> but he said it. Yeah, it's real though. And if, and, 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 if um, Donald Trump is in office, you're going to probably see an economic collapse. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, so I, uh, I was looking at that now. They said the, uh, the markets have plummeted because they were freaking out how, how uh, well he was doing in the race right now. Yeah. So you got like like swing states that's uh, still somewhat undecided and those uh, numbers are just coming in now. Man. You know what I'm saying? But like, like the president's been going into, man. Our people, man, shouldn't even be into that. Man. But they are, man. They look, they seeking a sign. All they gonna get is disappointment. Either way. Yeah, e either, either way. Yeah. If, if Hillary get in, so what? I really don't believe that $26 billion is gonna be, be, be pumped into those historically black colleges. Absolutely. I, I don't believe that. Them, them hoes on the brink of uh, being closed anyway. Yeah, right. You know, they always say those words just to help them get an office. Yeah. Like when you were, like, you know what I'm saying? When you try to influence somebody, when you try to get a sale, yeah. hey, if you do this for me, I'm going to make sure I reward you with this. Yeah. What did Barack Obama say when you got an office? I'm going to help you, Jay Sout. Oh, okay. Hey, man, what? Bro, I got you, my nigga. I right. got you, my nigga. All, all that was niggas dead in the streets all yeah. over the dang place. All he's done uh, really for Jake is pardon Drake, uh, pardon a couple of Jakes who had non, uh, non-violent offenses for, uh, for uh, drug-related uh, offenses. That's all he's done is pardoned a couple of those Jakes. That's right. it. That's it. Light in my new stuff. Right. Crack. Yeah. Come on, man. He ain't do nothing for you Negroes, Latinos. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. But put a foot in your, but help put a foot in your behind. Right. That's right. all he did. He just pushed the frog up he there. He, he, he gave more rights to the homosexuals than y'all. But you got these people still like, oh man, I, I'm gonna why miss can't we him. Have yeah. Barack Obama a third term. Why do we gotta have these two? Come on now, he just as bad as the two that's coming. He just kind of a little bit looks like you. Right. You know, but our people <laughs> so sleep, they don't want to realize. That's that. right, brother. They they would rap. They doing the same thing they did when they went it. They when they when they wanted a um a king, like when you go to Samuel. Saw um, um Samuel was the um he was the chief priest, and they went into him. They went to him like, hey, bro, we need a king. We need a king. And Solomon said, you get a king, your heart's going to be turned against the Lord. That's right, what man. What happened? Saul became king. And what happened with that? Their hearts turned against the Lord. Man. David came. David was king. David did his thing. He did his thing. And that's why he's going to sit in the throne when he comes back down here. That's right. And Solomon came right afterward. And Solomon went off right when he goes to the seventh chapter of Kings. And what, said, what did he say would happen? When you look around, that's what he said would happen. That, that's what happened. Niggas, right, niggas, man. niggas in Kool-Aid packets everywhere, man. Prostitutes all over the place. Jake tripping. That's what happened when he ordered a king. But it, hey, it's all through the, we gonna get a king still. Your house are gonna come back and sit on that throne. And that's, that's right. Everything's gonna be right. That's right, Akia. Everything's gonna be beautiful. No more GMOs. No more Esau ruling over you. No more have to worry about your children going to school and being abducted anywhere. You know what I'm saying? No more have to worry about your car getting a flat tire trying to do something.